Have you ever seen the ashtray of a Ford pickup truck sitting on a library shelf? Stick around, I'll tell you about it. Hi, I'm Kelsey D. Crawford, and I make comics and other art. Today, I want to tell you about my life as a teenage librarian while I draw today's art. And today's art is a page from my webcomic, The Legend of Jamie Roberts. We'll talk more about that later. I was lucky that my first job ever in the workforce, other than my family's business, but that's a story for another day. Anyway, my first job in the workforce was being one of the pages at my local library. I was the kid who walked with the cart and put books from our returns area back out onto the floor in their proper places. I would always try to shelve books in the art section because that's where the manga got shelved. I was fortunate to work at the library at a time when libraries were like, we need stock manga on our shelves to keep the teens reading. So we had some interesting selections. That's how I read Marmalade Boy, Paradise Kiss, and a bunch of titles from Tokyo Pop. Let's be real though, most of my paychecks went to Walden Books and buying so, so many volumes of manga. It's how I got my hands on Hunter x Hunter and Dragon Ball Z. Millennials, remember Walden Books, you're welcome for the psychic damage. Working at the library was, in retrospect, relatively chill. Admittedly, I would have fantasies where we would find a kitten in the return box like in the book Dewey. Highly recommend that book, by the way, for you cat and book lovers out there. But sadly, we never were so lucky in the two years that I worked there. But one day I did find the ashtray from a pickup truck. I kid you not. I was shelving books by the car manuals as we had at least three or four rows dedicated to car manuals. And smack in the middle of this section was an ashtray that looked ripped right out of a dashboard. It had cigarette butts and ashes in it and everything. I was utterly confused, but I couldn't just leave it there. It was stinky and a bit of a health hazard and we had small children running around that part of the floor. So I took the ashtray back to the area behind the front desk where my supervisors were. And and where we sorted the return books to get on the carts. I told them the sitch and asked, what do? One manager yelled from her corner office, burn it! Another supervisor said, let me hold on to it for our lost and found section. I will bet you someone will ask about it in a few. I left it with them and sure enough, a few minutes into sorting the religious books, here comes a dude with greased hair, a thin mustache and a leather jacket. He sniffs and he's like, <laughs> so uh, weird question. Have you seen an ashtray that looks like it got ripped out of a 1985 Ford Mustang? But honestly, that's not the weirdest thing I've come across working at a library, although it's definitely up there. All of the cool stuff I helped care for came at the next library I worked at. Before we get there though, let's talk real quick about this art that I'm drawing. This is a page from my webcomic, The Legend of Jamie Roberts. It's about a genderqueer pirate and their two best friends treasure hunting in a land full of dragons and why that's a bad idea. For this comic, I incorporated a lot of research on pirates, African art, and some first-hand research experience I gathered from going to Navajo Nation. Fun fact for you, and a peek behind the curtain, sections of chapters four through nine take place in a locale inspired by Canyon de Chez. You can read the webcomic for free at thelegendofjamieroberts.com. There is also a link in the description. Okay, I'll be honest about this next part. I wrote a blog post like this back in 2015, and this next part is just a retelling of what I wrote in that post. I'm not lazy. I'm efficient, and it's not plagiarism if it's my own writing. Anyway, I was a page for two years at my public library until I graduated high school and went to college. For a semester, I had a minor in pop culture because my alma mater was one of the few schools that offered classes in pop culture studies. While I was studying this oddball field, I worked at the Brown Popular Culture Library. Yes, this was a thing. It was a very cool thing too. It carried all manner of comics and graphic novels, and they even had dime novels from as far back Back as 1910. There were movie scripts, posters, and a ton of Star Trek memorabilia. I heard the library has the largest collection of Star Trek memorabilia carried by a library in the United States. There were also pulp magazines, though they were rarely, if ever, read. The pulp was so old, they were kept in special boxes so the lights, regular old lights, would not damage them. And if they were ever handled, it was with gloves so the oil on your fingers wouldn't damage the pulp paper. The library even carried copies of the original Elvish dictionaries written by J.R.R. Tolkien himself. So with all this awesomeness within our walls, you would think that we were slammed with people all the time, but there was a catch. The Brown Pop Culture Library is what librarians call a closed stack. 
library. That means everything was kept behind closed doors. And if you wanted to check out anything, you had to fill out a form and a librarian like me had to run back and fetch it. We had so much stuff and the storage space was so small that the majority of everything in the collection was kept in these rolling stack shelves. These are shelves that sit on a track that you push up and down to get the section that you want. The set we had at Brown had nautical looking handles to spin to make the shelves move. Pro tip, make sure no one else is in the stacks before you move them. To borrow a book or anything else, you had to look at our catalog first, which was online. You got the call number, filled out a form with the librarian, and the librarian would get the thing for you. But once you got the thing, it wasn't allowed to leave the floor. We had a lot, a lot of rare and fragile things, so we had to keep them in our line of sight. So no, there weren't a lot of people clamoring for the books there. My time at this particular library was short, but I enjoyed it. It was the job that got me into comics as a cultural force rather than comics as throwaway entertainment. Because the cool thing was, I saw a ton of old and new comics in that library. I saw the original pulp magazines and dime novels. I saw entire sections of occult and big air quotes here, magic books, western novels, film reels, and boxes of pulp magazines and movie posters. It was all really heckin' cool. Sometimes I miss being a librarian to be honest, but that's because I really like learning new things, collecting the fun facts, and sharing what I've learned with other people. And with that segue, I think that's a good way to announce that I have a workshop. This first workshop is Lettering Comics in Clip Studio Paint, which has tips and tricks I've learned using this program for the last eight years or so. You can watch that by checking out the link in the description. Future workshops are in the works, and I'm also open for suggestions, so if you would like to check out these workshops when they're ready, or leave suggestions for future workshops, be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell, and leave a comment down below with a possible suggestion. What was the coolest thing you ever saw in a library? For me, I have to say it was listening to a talk from Shof Coker, director of Moraini and artist of the comic New Masters from Image Comics. Libraries are very cool but I might be biased. Also, shout out to all of my club members here on the end screen. Y'all make this happen if you would like to join the clubs. There's a link down in the description. Thank you for watching. You are awesome.